Most people think they're safe because they have two-factor authentication turned on. However, the truth is some authentication methods are so outdated that using them is essentially leaving the door wide open to scammers. One of my clients actually asked me the other day, James, with so many options, which ones actually protect me? So in this video, I'm ranking every type of two-factor authentication from dangerous to bulletproof so you can fix your security before it's too late. We need to start with the least secure. If you're using this method, you need to change it immediately after watching this video. I'm talking about voice and text message verification. This is the OG of two-step verification, but it's the least secure. We've all done it. You try and log in and a service texts you a six digit code. It feels secure because theoretically only you have your phone, but in 2026, this is a scammer's absolute delight. Here's why it's dangerous. The mobile phone network infrastructure that sends these text messages were built decades ago, long before modern cybersecurity actually was a major concern and it has flaws. Sophisticated hackers can perform what is called a man in the middle attack. They don't even need to steal your phone. They can just intercept the signal between your cell tower and your device, grabbing that code out of thin air before it even hits your inbox. Even easier than that, they just trick you. We've seen this happen. You get a call from someone claiming to be your bank, maybe from the IT department. They sound professional and convincing. They say, hey, we've detected fraud. I'm going to send you a text to verify your identity. You read the code thinking that you're blocking the hacker, but you've just handed the keys directly to the bad guy. Then there's the nightmare of SIM swapping. This is where a scammer calls your mobile phone network provider and pretends to be you and convinces the customer service agent to transfer your phone number to a new SIM that they control. Once they have it, they get every single one of your text messages. They can reset your email password password, your bank password, and everything that's linked to your telephone number. So the rule here is simply only use voice or SMS if absolutely no other options are available. If the service you're using only provides you this option, frankly, it might be time to change services. If you're not sure where to start or what to do, feel free to book a video call with me, the link in the description. Now let's step it up a level. This is where most people should start as a minimum, the Authenticator app. These are dedicated apps you install on your smartphone. You've probably seen the big ones like Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, and Authy. The way these work is actually pretty cool. When you set them up, you scan a QR code. That QR code contains a secret key that is shared between the website and your phone. Once it's linked, your phone generates a new six digit number every 30 seconds based on the current time and that secret key. Because the server knows the key and the time, it knows what code your phone is showing without them ever needing to talk to one another over the internet. This kills the SIM at swap attacks. Even if a hacker steals your phone number, they don't have the phone's physical hardware or the app data, so they can't generate the code. But, and there's always a but, it's not perfect. First, be careful which app you download. It sounds crazy. Search for like Authenticator on the App Store. You might find malicious apps created by scammers. You download it, you scan the QR code, and then the app in the quietly in the background sends those keys straight to the hackers. Always stick to the big brand names you trust, Google, Microsoft, or a trusted security vendor. The second weakness, is still human error. While the code is harder to steal technically, you can still be fished. If you click a fake link that looks like a login page, you type in your username and password, and then the code from your app, the hacker on the other end captures it all and logs in before that 30 second timer has run out. So authenticator apps are safe, but they aren't bulletproof. This brings us to a method that tries to balance security with laziness, push notifications, or prompt notifications. You've probably seen this with Google or Instagram. You try to log in on your laptop and your phone buzzes. You just look at the screen and there's a message saying, saying, is this you trying to sign in with the big yes or no buttons? The beauty of this is convenience. You don't have to open the app. You don't have to memorize a six digit number to type in. You just tap yes. Behind the scenes, this uses strong encryption. The prompt is sent specifically to your registered device. A hacker in Russia can't intercept that prompt unless they have your actual physical phone. However, hackers are smart and they found a loophole. It's called MFA fatigue. Imagine it's 2 a.m. You're fast asleep and suddenly your phone buzzes. Is this you trying to log in? You ignore it. Two minutes later, Later, it buzzes again. Is this you? Then again, then again. This is the hacker spamming the login button, hoping that you'll be half asleep or get so annoyed that you eventually just hit the yes to make the phone shut up. The moment you hit yes, they're in. To combat MFA fatigue, some services show you a number on your computer screen. Say they show you the number 45 and you have to select number 45 from a list of three numbers on your phone. This effectively stops the fatigue attack because you can't just blindly tap a yes button. You have to actually see the screen. If you have an option for number matching within your push notifications, turn them on. It makes this method from okay to very strong. Now let's talk about a method that completely removes the password from the equation. Magic links. You might have seen these with services like Monzo in the UK or Slack. You type in your email address to log in and they say we sent a magic link to your email. You open your email, tap the link and boom, you're logged into the app. It's convenient because you don't need to know a password to access your account. All you need to do is have access to your email to be able to click the magic link. Here is the massive glaring problem with magic links though. It assumes your email account is secure. Your email inbox is the skeleton key to 
your entire digital life. If a hacker gets into your email, maybe because you've reused a password that was revealed in a hack many years ago, they have now access to every single service that uses magic links. They don't need to go directly and hack that service. They just request that they send a link to your email address, intercept it from in your inbox and delete the email before you've seen it. And they're in. Talking about whether your email account is secure, check the link in the description below for a video I've made on how you can check if your email address has been pwned. So magic links are convenient, but they are only as strong as your security on your email account. If your email account isn't locked down with a hardware key or strong two-step verification, magic links are a massive liability. Now, before we get onto the biometrical stuff, we have to talk about the only method that actually feels like a physical key. This is a physical security key. I've got two of them that I use for backup access. You might know them as brand names like a YubiKey or Google Titan key. As you can see, they look like little USB thumb drives that you can put onto your key ring. This sits right in the middle of our ranking because it's incredibly secure, but it comes with a physical trade-off. To log in, you have to plug the key into your computer's USB port or tap it on the back of your mobile phone using the NFC chip. This is powerful because it's phishing resistant. If you land on a website or a fake website that looks like Google, for example, you plug your key in and the key literally won't work. If the address is wrong, the key does nothing and hackers can't trick the hardware. And they also can't trick you into giving a code away either because you don't have one. For high value accounts like your master email account or your master admin account, or your business banking, this is fantastic. The downside, it's physical object. If you leave it at home, you can't log in at work. If you lose it, you could be locked out. That's the friction. And that's why a lot of people don't use them. But if you want maximum security and you don't mind carrying a dongle, this is gold standard for something you must have and use. We're getting into the heavy hitters now. This next one is where physical reality meets digital security biometrics. Think Face ID, Touch ID or Windows Hello. Biometrics is one of the most secure ways to authenticate because it relies on who you are, not what you know or have. When this tech first came out, people were paranoid. Can't they just hold up a photo of me to the camera? In the early days with cheap 2D cameras, maybe, but modern biometric systems like the ones on an iPhone or high-end Androids use depth mapping. They project thousands of invisible dots on your face, build a 3D map. A flat photo doesn't have depth, so the phone rejects that instantly. It makes it incredibly hard for scammers. Even if they have your password, even if they have your phone, they still need your face or fingerprint. I know what you're thinking, James, what if they chop off my finger? Look, if you're in a situation where sophisticated criminals are chopping off your digits to access your cloud storage, you have bigger problems than cybersecurity. But yes, technically, biometrics bind the access to your physical body. There is a slight nuance you should know, though. In some jurisdictions like the US or the UK, the law treats biometrics differently to PIN codes. Police can often compel you to unlock your phone with your fingerprint or your face, whereas they might not be able to force you to reveal a numeric PIN code that's stored in your head. It's a niche concern for most businesses, but it's worth knowing. But even biometrics has a limit. It usually only locks the device itself or a password manager. What's the ultimate protection for websites? What is the method that makes phishing mathematically impossible? That's our final top tier ranking. Pass keys. Pass keys are the future. If you can switch to pass keys today, do it. Pass key is not a password. You never create it and you never see it. It's a piece of encoded cryptographic data stored securely on your device, your phone, your laptop, or your hardware key. Here's how it actually works. When you create a pass key for a site like Google or PayPal, your device creates two keys. One is public, gets sent to the website. The other is private, and that stays locked deep inside your computer or on your phone's secure chip. It never leaves your device. When you try to log in, the website sends a challenge to your phone or your computer. Your phone uses the private key to solve the puzzle and sends back the answer. You unlock it with your face or fingerprint. And here's why this is God tier security. With every other method we've discussed, excluding physical keys, but you know they're a bit of a hassle because you've got to carry them around, you could be tricked into typing a code into a fake website. If a hacker makes google.com with three O's, and it looks exactly like the real thing, you might type in that SMS code that's been sent to you or your authenticator code. Passkeys don't allow that. Passkey is cryptographically bound to a specific domain name of the website. Your phone knows that google.com with three O's is not google.com with two O's. If you land on the fake site, your phone simply won't offer the passkey. It won't work. The technology actually saves you from your own lack of attention. It stops phishing. It stops password reuse. It stops database leaks because even the hacker steals the public key from the website server. It's useless for the private key on your device. Now, before you go changing all your two-step verification settings, I have to give you one pro tip that saves my clients from disaster, backup codes. When you set a strong security like pass keys or authenticator apps, you're effectively closing the door. But what happens if you lose your phone 
or you drop your phone in the ocean, you're locked out. Every time you set up two-factor authentication, the service will often give you a list of backup codes or recovery codes. Do not ignore these. Save them in a securely encrypted note. These are your break glass in case of emergency codes. Without them, reclaiming your account can take weeks. Even sometimes it's not possible at all. So here's your plan of action. If you're still using SMS for your business banking or your email, stop right now, go to your settings and upgrade them to at least the Authenticator app. But if you really want to be secure, start looking for pass keys option in the settings of the apps you use every day. It's faster, it's easier, and it closes the door on hackers completely. I put a link below to a guide on how to set up pass keys for major platforms. Go check it out. And if you want to know more about how to bulletproof your business against the threats that are coming in 2026, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.